Welcome to Got Tech's Digital Escape the Room Professional Development. This professional development consists of several videos that will help you plan, develop, and design your Digital Escape the Room. The Digital Escape the Room Professional Development consists of several videos. Each video will take you step by step through the process of creating your own Digital Escape the Room using my example of the Odyssey to guide you through the process. Let's quickly go over the videos that are in this professional development. Video one is our overview, which is the video that you're listening to right now. Video two goes over the planning and it gives you a list of resources that you'll use to make your digital escape the room. Video three is actually a series of videos and this is all about the development or the creation of our clues. Uh, in the Odyssey Digital Escape the Room, I use four different clue types. However, I've used several different clue types in when you look at all my Digital Escape the Rooms. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the four Digital Escape the Room clues for the Odyssey first. And then after that, I'll keep going and show you some of the other clues I used in some of the other ones. You can pick whichever clues that you want to still get you to the same end point. Just keep in mind that... Each clue typically on average takes between 7 and 12 minutes for the students to figure out. Video 4 is designing the Google site. We're going to use new Google sites, uh, which is part of the G Suite for Education uh, platform. So if your school is a G Suite school, good news is this is free. So you'll be able to use it no problem. There are other ways that we could get around this. And if you have that problem, you can contact me and, and we'll uh, troubleshoot this for you and we'll come up with some ideas. Video 5 is all about publishing and sharing. So once you have your digital escape the room on the new Google Sites, we want to make sure it's protected and that no one else can change the content that's on there because it's a lot of hard work that you've gone through. So we'll go through step by step how to publish and share each clue, each artifact that was within your digital escape the room and make sure that it stays safe and intact. At the end of video five, you will have a completed digital escape the room for your classes to use. And the great thing about this is they could be used over and over and over again, and you can share the website with other teachers and they can use it. And it's just a nice collaborative lesson that you can share with other people and several students can go through and complete. Before we move on to video two, planning and resources, I want to show you the digital escape the room that I'm going to use as an example throughout this professional development on the Odyssey. This is the Odyssey digital escape the room example that we'll be using. I'm going to go over some of the parts and just give you a basic overview of everything that you need in order to have a successful digital escape the room. Uh, first of all, we have a title. That's just a picture in which I inserted in there. You always need some directions. It doesn't have to be uh, super laid out and explained. You Part of the mystery of this whole activity is getting them to work through things that they're not comfortable with. A lot of students won't be comfortable with figuring out clues on their own. They want us to give them the answer. So just a little bit of direction at the beginning will suffice for this activity. Next up, we have the Google Form that we use for our locks. So if you click on Zeus there, this will take us to the Google Form. And I'm going to be brief about this because we'll go over this in more detail later on in a different video. So here's the Digital Escape the Room lock form for the Odyssey. I get some basic information, the names of the members of their group. And I also tell them to open this form in a different window. So if they start filling it out and they have to go back to the digital escape the room, then they won't lose all their answers. So if they open it in a new window, that prevents them from losing their answers uh, to any of the clues that they've solved. Now, this is probably the most important part of this lock form is, as far as students helping students solve the clues is giving them a picture of the lock types. So I use this picture for every digital escape the room that I do, whether I use the lock or not. They just need to be able to visualize what the lock looks like, and that will help them in answering all the clues within the digital escape the room. 
Below this are just the descriptions of the types of locks that are in the digital escape the room. So I have a secret word lock. Uh, I tell them how many letters is in that clue or the answer to the clue. And uh, I tell them to use all caps because this sheet is formatted. You, you, they need to have the exact answer in order to get it right. And that's super important. But we'll go over more of this later on. When they're done solving each one, they'll hit next. And that will tell them that they have completed the digital escape the room. Next up are our clues for the digital escape the room. I always start the digital escape the room with some type of a hidden message. Now this one is not that hard, and I typically make the answer to the hidden message not that hard, just so they get some positive momentum going when trying to do the digital escape the room, especially if I know it's the student's first one. Because getting the answer to that first clue kind of gives them some motivation and encouragement and confidence that they can complete this. So this is the first type of a clue that I could give. Below that are other clues, and these are all pictures, and I always, not always, but most of the time I use uh, pictures to be my uh, hyperlink holder. So if they click on a picture, that will take them to the clue. And we'll go over some of these in some future videos, but the clues always come underneath. And usually I have anywhere from three to five clues. And that is pretty much the digital escape the room. Like I said, if you take this in small chunks, small pieces, and you work with these videos, you'll have a pretty nice digital escape room by the time that this is all over. So at this point, it's time to hop on over to video two, which is the planning and organization of the digital escape room, and it will also give you some resources that you could use along the way.